Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series on quantum statistics. This is video number 19, and this is the first video of a series of sub-videos on the density of states. So I'm going to solve, first of all, the time-independent Schrodinger equation. I'd like to introduce my website, universityphysicstutorials.com, where I have all my videos archived and listed. So, the previous videos to this are as follows. In my quantum well section, I'd like you to look at the infinite potential well and the particle in a 2D box. I'd like you to look at my video called The Density of States, The Number Density and Occupancy, and The Meaning of Macro and Micro Boxes. The reason I want you to look at these two is because I'll be solving the Schrodinger equation, and um, I'm not going to do the details because I've done them there. And these two is just more uh, giving you an insight as to what's coming next. So, just a small bit of a recap. In my previous videos on quantum statistics, I introduced the placeholder G sub s, which I said was the number of microstates in macrostate s. So G sub 10 would be the number of microstates in macrostate 10. So if G sub 10 was equal to, not, it was equal to, I don't know, 51, there would be 51 microstates in macrostate number 10. Now, from now on, I'm, let's just assume that if I say state, I'm talking about microstates, so I'm not going to talk about macrostates. Now, we also had this other variable, I'm going to reduce this back to S. We had this rho, and we says, well, what, what's, what's this about? Now, the difference here is that G sub S is when they are when there is um, their discrete states. So you might have E1 plus E2 plus E3 but they're not joined or they're not they're discontinuous so in order to get the total energy we had to sum discreetly over all the energy states however if for some reason we're able to call it a continuum of energy st of, of states we're able to talk about rho so you might have a rho in terms of energy rho in terms of velocity or whatever it is so generally what we try and do because summing is difficult we try and you know we try and assume that we can go from the sum to the integral or try and do it where possible. I'm going to tell you that we will always go from the sum to the integral. But G sub s is, the, is discrete states, rho is a continuum or continuous states, and uh, we, we put, we'll say, the variable energy or velocity or momentum in brackets. So next, in physics we like to, we like to analyze what a body does, or let's say in this case a particle is doing. So in quantum physics, in order to do that, we need to solve the Schrodinger equation. Now, the most simple Schrodinger equation, or the most simple way of analyzing uh, what something is doing, is by saying it's an, in, an infinite potential well, where we say the potential is zero inside and the potential is infinity outside. Now, you might, this is where all physics problems, or quantum physics problems, start. It's the first place to start. So, this is, that's why we're going to analyze the behavior of any body, or any particle, by solving, getting the Schrodinger equation for if that particle was in an infinite potential well. And fine, if we want to make a better model, we can put in a finite potential well, or a periodic potential well, or whatever it is. Okay? But this is where we start. So, in order to analyze something, we need to solve the Schrodinger equation first. So, let's go ahead and do it. So, the time-independent Schrodinger equation in one dimension says it's minus h bar squared over 2m. Then we have del 2 psi del x squared plus v of x psi, which I'm going to say is equal to zero, is equal to e times psi. Okay? Now, of course, we can very, very easily extend this to three dimensions using the Laplacian. As follows. So, that's, but I'm going to do it in one dimension for the moment. But, sorry, isn't is not equal to e, there's actually, yeah, that is, that is, two, is equal to k squared, excuse me, like that. So, in one dimension, of course, we can get rid of the, uh, we can get rid of the, um, the Laplacian, okay, so, we're going to move from here, down to here, which I've done in my previous videos, where we said that k squared is equal to 2me over h bar squared, okay, of course, giving energy e is equal to p squared over 2m, something you've seen plenty of times, okay, great stuff. So, I, I'm sure you've seen it plenty of times now that we can solve this equation very simply. So, psi of x would be the normalization time, constant times e to the i k, k, kx, not k sub x, e to the i kx. That, that's pretty poor. Cool. 
So in one dimension, if we want to get the Schrodinger equation to analyze a particle, that's what we have, e to the i kx. If we want to gen then generalize it to three dimensions, it's pretty straightforward. That's why I've asked you to look at my video on the particle in the 2D well. So we have a e to the i k x in one dimension. And then, of course, in three dimensions, you're going to have well a bar, so that it's different to this a, e to the i k x, e to the i k y, e to the i k z. All these k's are different. Or we have a bar e to the i k dot r. Okay, I'm sure you've seen that. And that's our wave function in three dimensions. Okay, there's our wave function in three dimensions. Now, in order to solve a, uh, any, we'll say, differential equation, we need to give something boundary conditions. Otherwise, what we've just gotten, the information we've just gotten, has no real meaning. So we saw that the wave function psi is equal to a times, or a bar, or whatever, e to the, uh, e to the i k dot r. So what are the boundary conditions? Well, in one dimension, the boundary condition would be quite simple. It would be you're going from, let's say, it's 0 to a, and the wave function, that means the wave function goes back. It's periodic. So whatever value it is at 0, it is at a. So if we start having three dimensions, it's the same thing. Every time we jump to an, a boundary, we come, we come back to the start. Okay, I'm sure you've seen that plenty of times. So that means the following. It means that psi of r plus a in the, uh, we'll say, ai hat is equal to psi of r, psi of r plus a uh, j hat is equal to psi of r, and psi of r plus a k hat is equal to psi of r. In other words, what I'm trying to say here is that if you just move to the boundary, you're back to where you started. Okay, so how do we, how, where do we go from here? How does that give us more information? Well, let's just look at it in one, in one dimension. So psi sub x is equal to, we'll say, a bar e to the i k x. So I'm saying that the wave function here and the wave function here are the same. So this is psi 0, this is psi a. Psi 0 is equal to a bar e to the i k 0. And we know that psi sub a is equal to a bar e to the i k a. E to, the, e to the naught is 1, so we, that means that a bar times 1 is equal to a bar e to the i k a. Okay, now the only way this can happen is if it's periodic. Okay, and the only way it's periodic, e to the i 2 pi is back, it goes back to where it started, and that means that uh, k a is equal to 2 pi, or k a is 2 n pi, or k is equal to 2 pi over a times n. Okay? That's the only way that can happen. I'm, I hope that's pr pretty clear to you. That's the only way it can happen because it's a periodic function. It's periodic with a period of 2 pi or uh, yeah, after 2 pi you go back to where you started. Okay? So, um, now that means that for each dimension, and we have three, we have a different k value and a different n value. So just go back to here. That means we have the following. We have k1 is equal to twice pi over a n1, k2 is equal to twice pi over a n2, and k3 is equal to twice pi over a n3. Or if you can think about it as x, y, and z if you like. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop from there because I want to have these videos short so you're able to navigate them pretty straightforward. So the point there is that we wanted to analyze what a, part, a random or a, a general particle does. In order to do that, we needed to solve the Schrodinger equation. The most simple one to begin with is the independent, or sorry, excuse me, the infinite potential well. When we solved it, we found that we're, we got this particular wave function. And the wave function is characterized by these particular values of k and these particular values of n. So instead of looking at the wave function, uh, looking at the wave function and looking at a e to the i, k dot r, we can instead look at these values of n or k. Okay, so we're after coming up with, I hope you know what I'm what we're about to say here, we're after coming up with some quantum numbers. So these are integers which are able to characterize the, uh, the particle or the wave function. 
So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and um, yeah, thank you. Bye bye.